a former drama and theater art student. So it's all about the method acting to the point where I took out a whole new mortgage, bought a whole new house, moved and made sure I timed it right for when you were going to be on the show. Your dedication to your craft. I mean, you and Daniel Day Lewis are two of my acting inspirations, how you're so immersive. So thank you for, I hope your listeners, uh, appreciate your commitment of how you have done this and, 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 you know, I do. And, yeah. uh, as, by creating these perfect conditions for anxiety, uh, also you're not alone. Cause I know your listeners, uh, either have anxiety or know someone that struggles with anxiety, or maybe has a kid child with anxiety. And so as we know, it's not just something that makes life hard. It limits us, keeps us from happiness, and it can it can ruin a life or limit a life. So it feels meaningful to be here with you and your audience and share them, share with them a perspective that is very valuable to them, which is that we don't uh, we we figured out how to not just manage anxiety, but to have it yeah. go away and not come back. And that's what we're here to talk about. Does that sound good? Oh, no, it sounds awesome. And, you know, genuinely, I'm so glad to have you here. This the this episode recording is going to go slightly differently, I think, to um, to a lot of others, because we're kind of already in it. Um, so I will I will introduce you properly at some point. Um, but I think also it's quite timely that we're at the beginning of a new year. There's a lot going on in the world, um, uh, you know, from a economic standpoint from a social standpoint environmental and so on people of all walks of life ages etc are um anxious about different things you know i know a lot of my clients are talking about their their kids who really have just given up on the future altogether because they think that the earth is gonna you know fall into the sun um what we really need to tell them is that that is not going to happen. We might wipe ourselves out, but the earth will still be here spinning uh, long after we're all gone. Uh, sorry, that's probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> um, and then, it, you know, all this inflation stuff, people's mortgages going up and so on. And, you know, really, it's easy. Some people say in the grand scheme of things, and none of this actually matters. But you try telling that to someone that's in a bit of a fix. Um, the other thing I think that is it, not great but is kind of great um, is the fact that you and I come at this subject from places of personal trauma, um, because I know that you've been through a lot um, years ago, and I certainly have as well growing up with, um, you know, abuse and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so so this is this is going to be great, but we, we're, we're going to not bring everything down, obviously. <laughs> And try and keep this upbeat. Well, as you brought up some really good points that you know th this topic of anxiety and and fear. It's it's not just a topic; it really affects people in many ways. One, you just said, you know, it's we're, we're recording this a little bit after New Year's, and of course, you know, New Year's it's part of the, sometimes the New Year's resolutions, and people focus on their mental health. And you'll hear, you know, New Year, New Me, and that sounds great. However. As I'll explain to your audience, because mental health experts have so confused people and given so people such poor tools, good luck with that. That's like being stuck in a tornado and being like, new year, new me. It's like, that sounds good, but it's not going to work. So I can tell you this, what we care about is results. Uh, we, ha we just had a, a client of ours that went through right at New Year's. They started the program just uh, right before Christmas because they said, I'm going to be around family and I don't want to be a hot mess. Uh, their words, not mine. And that's not the yeah. clinical uh, phrase that we use, hot mess. That was their words. And so they started the program, right, about the first week in December. And not only were they already much calmer and more grounded for the holidays, so the in-laws didn't bother them and they enjoyed the holidays more, but then New Year's came through and they said, I do feel like, I do feel like a new me because when you don't have anxiety anymore, it, it, it really is a whole new way of being. So to anybody out there where mental health or being less afraid was part of your news resolution, but it sounds good, but you're like, hmm, I've tried to work on this for years and nothing really worked. What I'm going to share right now is an understanding of anxiety and send you tools so that your fear and anxiety can go away permanently. And when it's gone, and I can speak from experience, uh, it is a new you. It is a true new you. And also... 
what you said about, you know, there's a lot going on and people are struggling. And one of the fundamental confusions about anxiety, and you can hear it in people's language, is like, well, I'm, I'm really anxious right now because of the economy. I'm really anxious right now because of the pandemic. I'm really anxious right now because of politics. That's how it feels because you feel the fear and anxiety coming up when this stuff is, is occurring. And if you don't understand what's going on, you think, oh, that it's cause, that's what's causing it. People said, oh, my anxiety was caused by the pandemic. It looks that way, except it's not that way. Uh, anxiety has a root cause that's there, dormant, and activities can activate it and make it worse, but not cause it. How do I know? I went through the pandemic and I was chill as a cucumber mm -hmm. and we had clients that came to us during the pandemic because they were in so much pain and needed relief. They went through, uh, used our program that solves their anxiety. So it's gone. And they were not only calm, they were the calmest they'd ever been in their entire life during the pandemic. So let me clarify, you are not anxious because of what's going on. You have anxiety and I'll explain to you why. And these circumstances are activating it and making it worse. Now, why is that good news? Well, because life's always going to be challenging. And if you think your anxiety is linked to what's going on in the outside world, you can't solve it because we can't magically make the world not scary. You yeah. know, it's tough out there. Yeah. But what if you could just feel consistently calm no matter what is going on? Not only are you calmer, but what that gives you, which is the thing we're trying to get our our clients and your audience is real freedom, like real freedom, not just to have less anxiety, but when you're not anxious and afraid, think, how would your life be if you didn't have fear and anxiety? Like I'm asking you, Roberto, how would your life be better? Well, I think my, just because she's in front of me opening an Amazon package, but my first answer would be, I think my wife's life would be a lot better because she'd have to deal with this stress ball, you know, 365 days a year perennial ball of stress over here i mean yes i mean it, it, you know i think i think sorry to answer your question less facetiously although that was actually really true um and she just walked away nodding her head rolling her eyes to the heavens um you know i i think to, to kind of not feel that I'd feel almost like there's nothing that I could achieve because there would be nothing that would be holding me back. Pretty much, pretty much. So to your audience listening and, and I'm going to be talking through the filter of the word anxiety. Some people say, well, I don't have anxiety. However, as you're going to learn, as I explain more, this applies not to just anxiety, but overwhelm, fear of failure, fear of rejection, insecurity, self-doubt, anything that you might describe as fear, this is going to res resonate. We saw the root cause of all of those is one root cause. And if you had less anxiety or fear or self-doubt, whatever you call it, life is just so much better in so many ways. And you're absolutely right. Your spouse is happier. One of, you know, for me, we do this to help people. And it's not just helping people, it's helping the people that are affected by it, the spouses and the children. I had a client come to me and he said, I've been anxious for 20 years with panic attacks. I've tried everything. I've spent hundreds of, no, not hundreds of thousands. He said $100,000 on this and it's still here. And not only is it ruining me, my, my wife doesn't have her happy husband. My children are outside playing. I'm in here curled up in a ball. And he said, and then I feel guilty and horrible because uh, I'm not out there. And so he said, I know someone that went through your program that swears by it. And he said, I'm skeptical, but I, I found out that you only pay at the end when you get results. I said, yep. And he said, all right, well, let's give it a try. And so around week four, he reached out and he said, this was the greatest gift, but not just to me. He said, I'm, I feel calm now but now my wife has her husband back and i was outside playing with my kids for the first time so their my kids have their father back so the power of what we're doing it, it's it's not just the individuals we're trying to just it, it's profound and so yeah i get very passionate about it because we're all here to help yeah. and when you figure out something that gets rid of anxiety and fear it just makes the world a better place in so many ways
No, absolutely, and that's what we're here to do. So I'm going to introduce you because people are now wondering who the hell you are. Today's guest is a UC Berkeley mechanical engineer who turned his battle with anxiety into a breakthrough. After extensive research and testing, he created the world's first program with a 90% success rate in solving anxiety permanently. Unique in his approach, his clients pay only after achieving results. Also a seasoned comedian and a fan of Peach Gelato, he brings a blend of humor and innovation to everything he does. Tailoring Talkers, let's welcome the engineer of Anxiety Solutions, Daniel Packard, to the show. Daniel, how are you? Thank you for asking. Well, I am in purpose because this is what I was... uh, I'm here to do is to serve people in pain and the planet in this way. But also I know people don't believe me. I it just, I'm chill as a cucumber, no matter what happens. So I'm calm and content and happy and fulfilled and the best thing ever because of what we figured out, this isn't a temporary feeling. It's just my default. I'm just a default. And so I'm, I'm free and I'm happy and I'm here to serve your audience because they're probably being like, a, I don't believe you B screw you, but <laughs> that's how I'm feeling. And I make these big claims about how I feel, our clients feel, the effectiveness of what my company does. Your audience is going to like what they're hearing, but they will not believe me. They just will not believe me. And that's not their fault. They've been so heavily confused by what I call the improvement industrial complex. This is therapy, psychology, doctors, uh, personal development, spiritual teachers that make a lot of money, about a trillion dollars a year on people's pain but they don't deliver permanent results. And so it's confusing people and making people feel like they have to live like this for the rest of their lives. I did. And so I'm going to make some really big claims. You should be skeptical. Do not believe me. However, at the end, I'm going to send your audience to my website to get a free training where they can apply one of our techniques so that you can actually feel how effective this is so that you understand this is not too good to be true. This is just a real innovation that could get you, give you your life back. Yeah. But I think people already, if they listen, because you said it, and then I said it when I introduced you that you're not some snake oil salesperson because there's a lot of that going on in the world today. I mean, God knows you can't scroll through an Instagram feed or even just browse the internet without someone promising to help you to make a thousand bucks a day by following their online course and doing this and that. There's all these big people making big grand claims and they want to take your money first. You said it, then I said it. You don't take money off anybody until they actually see the results. So, And, and also I want to be clear because people. people, I just want to interrupt because this is such an innovative, we want it as I'll explain how I, how we ended up here. Um, what we're doing is so disruptive that it's hard for people to even wrap their heads around. So when I tell people we don't charge you to the end, they go, oh yeah, money back guarantee. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's where they take your money. And then if it doesn't work, you got to go through red tape and hoops to get your money back. No, 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 no. We measure your anxiety in a couple key metrics from one to 10. We do not collect the, the full amount of the program at the beginning. Then you go through it. You are tracking your anxiety levels numerically, scientifically with data. So as you go through the program, by the end, we have numerical data that you self-report that your anxiety is either completely gone or significantly down in six weeks. When you have that data, we have that data, that's when we charge you. So it's not a money-back guarantee. Like we wait for results. And people say, Daniel, like how can you guarantee that? The reason we can guarantee it is because that was our goal from the very beginning. What happened, how we ended up here was... You know, when I was a kid growing up, my dad was a scientist and an inventor, and um, I just saw him invent things, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Like, it, it was sort of a magic trick. Something mm-hmm. didn't exist, and he made it, and I thought, that is, that is cool. And he told me, he said, Daniel, if something in this world isn't working, you know, you can invent something, make the world better. And that always just stuck with me. Like, you don't have to just tolerate what's out there. You can invent something. And he also said... What I love about science is anybody can have a theory, but it's the person who gets results you want to listen to. He said results matter. And we know that about a lot of the industries, sales, marketing, um, 
when you take your car to a mechanic, so many things, results matter. And then we get to what I call, again, the, the improvement industrial complex. People get horrible results. That's not the problem. The problem is we don't have a problem with it. So what happened was I went to engineering school to become an inventor and I learned how to um, look at a complex problem, how to break it down into basically mechanics and engineering, build a prototype, and then you test and you optimize and you collect data until the thing works consistently based yeah. in the engineering and mechanics. So I, I was highly trained to make things that work. The problem was they didn't teach me how to make life work. They didn't teach me how to make relationships work. Um, and so I fell in love and Disney said we'd live happily ever after. Apparently not true. The relationship turned very unhealthy quickly. Um, I later found out I was basically at times being emotionally abused, but was too insecure and codependent to leave. Yeah. And when the relationship was over about two weeks later, my whole system just crashed the tiniest thing. Someone interrupted me, a car door would slam, um, an email, and I would feel terror, not fear, terror. And I was told this is complex PTSD and anxiety. So I'm like, okay, great. And then I went to go looking for help. And I spent 10 years, 10 years going to therapists and psychologists and doctors and spiritual teachers and retreats and doing EMDR and EFT and MOUSD and going to people with all the letters and trying everything. And they gave me tips and tools to manage it, but it was never solved. And I was in a lot of pain, man. And it was getting worse. Then my friends and family walked away because they didn't want to be around a person in pain, which made me feel more broken and alone. And I, I wouldn't have taken my own life, but I definitely get why people do. I Because yeah. I was not happy and nothing was solving it. I felt trapped. And I was like, why do this? And I had this sort of sort of come to God moment. I was, I just was like, what? Like, what? What? What do you want from me? What is this about? I'm trying. I've been trying for 10 years. What? And I sort of heard my dad's voice of if something ain't working, invent something better. And I was like, oh, I thought you meant like a car or a machine, but maybe us. And I also remember what my dad said, results matter. And I saw that this stuff I had spent money on and your listeners have spent money on, it doesn't solve it. It's getting crappy results and nobody has a problem with it. So I started my own research company with the mission, could we use an engineering approach, not psychological or spiritual, mechanical to understand what's going on, why we feel this way and how to fix it quickly and consistently. I didn't know if it was possible. It took eight years. It was over a million dollars in research and development. We worked with 3000 people on five continents and I was one of the first test cases. My I remember the morning it happened, my anxiety and fear, it just, I woke up one morning, it was basically gone. I thought it would come back because that's what normally, it just didn't come back. And I, I told my team, I said, we, we did it. But we didn't fully do it because we didn't want it to be a fluke and we didn't want it to be complicated. So we spent another several years to create a systemized, optimized program that was simple and step-by-step. -step. So now we have an online program that anybody can take. It's very affordable because it's all online. And no matter what type of anxiety you have, no matter how long you've had it, 90% success rate. And we don't charge until the end when you have the result. If we can't help you, we don't pay because results matter. And again, your audience isn't going to believe me. So at the end, I want them to get this free training and apply the technique so they have a result for themselves. Like, don't believe me. Words, you've been oh, burned yeah. before. Don't believe my words but get a result at the end. And this is because I'm trying to wake everybody up to say, look, if you're struggling, whether it's fear and security, anxiety, I want to wake everybody up and say, we need to demand results from these people that we pay to help us. So if you've gone to people and didn't get great results and you're like, he's right, I am not getting good value for my dollar. And you're interested to find out how to get real results. That's what I want to share with your audience. I think, um, by the way, I'm really glad that you led into because that was the first thing I was going to talk about was your father um, and how he's influenced you and still influences you to this day in everything that you do. And he was absolutely right. I mean, what a wise man. 
you know, something isn't working, don't complain about it. Go make something better. Go make something that does work. And then obviously with your engineering background and expertise, you were able to kind of fig- start figuring this out. All coming from a point of wanting to help people. I think one of the things it, it might be helpful to kind of start talking about is actually looking at anxiety and working out what it actually is because you know it's it can be different things to different people i don't think it's a kind of you know binary textbook sort of definition that fits everybody because for some people anxiety is fear it's uh i know eric ream who's a previous guest would describe it as possibly his beast that he talks about in his book and on his podcast. Um, it's something that can be quite debil- de- very debilitating. It can it can make you it, it can stop you from doing things. It can make you break commitments. It can make you seem unreliable to close family and friends around you who don't understand the reasons why you behave the way that you do. Um, it um, I can think of another hundred definitions that are swelling around in my head right now. You know, it can, to use something that you touched on earlier, it can make you think of just ending everything because you just can't cope. I've definitely been there at multiple times in my life. Um, you know, does that ring true for you that anxiety isn't just a kind of one for all, that it, it is so many different things to so many different people? Well, it rings true for me and it should ring true for your audience because they have the same lack of clarity and confusion. And when I had it, yes, I'm like, what is it? Is it this? Is it that? I don't know what it is. But the feeling that comes up for me now is a bit of frustration. And the frustration is you're a smart guy. Your audience is savvy. You've been working on this a while and you have no idea what's going on. And not because you're not smart, because these experts do not know what they're talking about. And it's confusing the living crap out of everybody. Like, you're a smart guy. And you were you were just like, is it this? Is it that? Like, that is because these people, if you go to the doctor, if you fall off a ladder and you have a broken leg, you know what that is. Nobody with a broken leg says... I'm not really sure what it is. Do I have salsa dancing leg disorder? Is it that my father did? Like, you know what happened? You fell off, you broke your leg, it hurts. How do we, when it comes to the physical stuff, we're clear. People don't talk. If you're choking, nobody says, oh, is that a scarcity mindset where you're you're really focusing on the lack of air? Like, no, we know what this stuff is. But because the experts claim they're experts, they go around confidently telling what people it is and isn't. It leaves everybody super confused, which leads to hopelessness. Now, when we tell people we have a solution, they don't believe us because they've been told this is complicated. And it's not, but their experience tells them it's complicated. So I thought the big challenge was going to be to discover the program. That was difficult. Don't get me wrong. Now there's this whole other challenge of trying to convince people this is a simple solution because they've been so confused. And so I'm not frustrated at individual therapists and psychologists. They're doing the best they can. They're trying to help. The problem is they're not honest with the quality of their knowledge. Unless you can solve something, don't claim to know what it is. Unless, okay, I, if you, if if you're a car mechanic, I took my car to a car mechanic. I had a sob because I wanted to be alternative. And I took my car to a mechanic and he said, well, it's a sob and I don't really know sobs. So I may not know how to solve this, but I'll give it a shot because I was in the middle of nowhere and he was, you know, and he tried it. And he said, you know, I was right. I, I don't understand the Saab engine and I wasn't ready to fix it. He couldn't fix it, but he was honest about it. He said, I don't know what this is. Okay, so then I could go find someone. But the therapists and psychologists and doctors, they tell you what it is, but they don't know what it is. If they knew what it is, they would have solved it. An example of this is uh, I was at a, at a conference where I was speaking and I was talking on anxiety and I was telling everybody exactly what anxiety is. How do I know? Cause we're solving it and we back up our results. This other woman got on stage and she said, Oh, I'm going to tell you what anxiety is. 
And she said, anxiety is a lack of gratitude. She goes on and on about how gratitude is great. And if you're less grat- grateful, now you're a scarcity mindset and it's going to make things worse. Now, what's true is if you're grateful, it might raise your vibration a bit. Um, it might make you feel a little bit better. And of course, if you're focused on the negative, it's probably going to make things worse. Fine. But that doesn't mean that's what anxiety is. But she gets up there and she says, hey, everyone, it's a lack of gratitude. People are writing it down in their journals, lack of gratitude. I got to be more grateful. So I walked up to her because I knew what she was saying wasn't accurate. And I said, hey, um, you said the root cause of anxiety is a lack of gratitude. She said, yes. And I said, and how do you know that? She said, well, when I'm grateful, I feel better. I said, that, that doesn't mean you've sought. And I said, did you have anxiety? and completely get rid of it through gratitude? She said, no. She said, I've never even had anxiety. I said, wait, what, what, what? What? I I, I said, okay, so you don't even know if this is true. She said, well, no. And then I said, do you, have you helped anybody who had crippling anxiety and purely through gratitude, it went away and never came back? And she said, no, of course not. I was like, well, then I didn't say this to her. I walked away, but I was like, then don't tell people, you know what you're talking about. So This is my soapbox because there's so many people in pain because they're confused. And I'm trying to clarify that. As you can tell, I get very passionate. Oh, no, totally. And I think I probably illustrated the point of confusion perfectly for you. Yes. Thank you again for being so method. I appreciate you preparing yourself your entire life. I forgot to mention how method I was that we actually started packing our house, our old house on Christmas Eve. And we moved on New Year's Eve. You are so <laughs> dedicated to your craft, Roberto. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, new new year, new house. But yeah. So let me explain to your audience. Instead of just telling them they've been confused, let me give your audience yes. clarity. Would you like some clarity? Uh, absolutely. Well, uh, the other thing, I just wanted to to share a thought with you because I was thinking that you know, everything we've been talking about, when you talk about psychotherapists and therapists and whatever, because God knows I've seen my fair share of them, um, they're all trying to fix things from a mental point of view. And the problem with our brains and that kind of mental portion is it's vast. So where would you, I mean, if you imagine that your brain, your mind is the bonnet of a car engine, Normally, if you open up the bonnet of a physical car, there's an engine there. It's a certain size. It has certain parts, right? And most engines, combustion engines anyway, the principles are the same of all of them. If you were to open up the virtual bonnet of someone's mind, you could literally just dive in head first and you'd be swimming around forever because it's vast. So how the hell would you know how to, to fix things so I you know I wonder if there's something that's more physical because when I'm when I'm feeling anxiety certainly there's a lot there's actually when I really think about it there's more going on in here and for people not watching the video version of this which will be on YouTube um I'm I'm clutching at my chest in front of Paul Daniel here who's probably thinking oh my god this guy's crazy um but I, I'm just trying to relive some very, very anxious stuff that we're going through at the moment. And and most of the feeling, if I really think about it, actually isn't up here in my head. It's actually here. It's physical. It's in my chest. My heart rate goes up. Um, sometimes if it's really bad, I have physical pain. So there's something that is going on in the physical engine rather than the kind of man, am I making any sense whatsoever? You're making so much sense because you're pointing exactly again at the problem. The problem is not the fear and anxiety. The problem is that the experts are do not know what's going on and have confused people, and also they don't know how to solve it. That's why everyone's so anxious. When we figured it out, my anxiety and fear went away. People think fear and anxiety is a problem because it's a problem. No, it's a problem because they haven't figured it out. When you break your leg, that's not a huge problem. You break your leg. They know what that is. You put a cast on it heals. It, there's, not, there's, not, there's not a huge broken leg epidemic. Mm-hmm. Broken legs mm-hmm. aren't on the rise. We aren't seeing millions of teens with a broken leg problem because they understand it. 
And what you pointed to is the fundamental misunderstanding, which is so annoying, which you just pointed to. You just said it. When I'm anxious, it's in the body. Okay. Do people say, hey, I think anxious or I feel anxious? They say, I feel. No one ever says they think anxious. Right. No one ever says it. And when you have it, you feel it. You can feel it in your chest, in your throat, in your stomach, in your heart. This is not like cutting edge knowledge or research. Your audience already knows this. So if you were to start trying to figure this out, you would think the best place to go looking is where it's coming from, where you're feeling it, which is the body. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. One little issue. The experts call it mental health yeah so we go back up here inside into that vastness of the mind etc etc where you could be i mean it's infinite so who the hell knows the answer but but it's worse than that forget the vastness they're just in the wrong place yeah well yeah true i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) so it's two issues one is the mind isn't even vast they have it's 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 180 billion neurons on average I have 180.25 billion because, you know, I counted. Uh, I think there's a trillion synaptic path. They have no idea what's going on in the brain at all. But forget that. It's the wrong place. It's called mental health. They've had 100 years to figure this out, modern psychology. The results are getting worse. And there's and everyone's feeling it in the body. And the experts are like, it's mental health. Really? That's my issue is their lack of humility to go, wait a minute. Maybe we're in the wrong place. The people say, why did you guys figure it out? We figured it out because we didn't get trained. The therapists, psychologists, doctors, spiritual teachers, they go to school or they learn something and they get told primarily it's a mind thing. Even spirituality says it's the ego. It's the it's the mind. No, but they get trained in that. They get attached to their theories and then they start sharing them and they they make money off of selling that stuff. So they think they know and nobody wants to find out they're wrong. The reason we figured out is we were just engineers. We weren't we weren't experts. We were outsiders. We could look at this objectively, start from scratch and say, let's solve this. And the second we came at it, the first question was, is it coming from the mind? Well, let's look at the results. Hmm. They've had 100 years to figure this out, and anxiety is on the rise. Based in results, the experts are not getting the job done. The fact they even prescribe medication means you are fired. You suck at this, okay? But, they, you know, they have a corner on the market. So, no, it's not a problem of the mind. Once we started saying, where is it coming from, very quickly, we started looking at the results it's coming from the body. You feel it in your throat, chest, heart, stomach. Now that's not theory, Ribeiro. That's fact. Because once we started focusing just on the body and we started developing tools that just focus on the body, surprise, effing surprise, because we were in the right location, my anxiety and the other test cases anxiety started to just collapse, go down and stay down. Not because we're geniuses, because we went to the right location. So this is not only important information. Your audience has been told it's a problem of the mind and you've been trying to solve it in the mind and failing and then blaming yourself, saying you're broken, you're weak, you're going crazy. What's wrong with you? There's nothing wrong with you. The experts accidentally sent you to the wrong place. So you've been on this hamster wheel and you were never going to solve it because you were just trying to manage the symptoms. So you are not broken. This is not your fault that you still have anxiety. It's the fault of the experts that you trusted who didn't know what they were talking about and weren't aware and humble enough to tell you. Again, this is not a theory. This is what got rid of my anxiety permanently. And it's what the beauty of going to the right location is your anxiety goes away and stays away and you're free every day we get our clients reaching out saying it's not even that i'm not anxious anymore i'm free to be happy now again i'm talking a big game don't just believe me at the end go to my website danielpacker.com get the free technique and apply it to yourself so that you can feel one of our techniques working not in your mind but in your body so that you can feel for yourself that what i'm saying is true where, how do you, where do you start then, Daniel? So we've identified the correct location, sort of 
down and around here rather than up there. How do you start dealing with the the kind of physical aspect of it? Well, it's a good question. And again, it goes back to you're asking and you have no idea. And I mean that to say as smart as you are and as many things as you've read mm-hmm. and as many things as your audience, when you ask these questions and people ask it, they have like no idea. They're like, oh, I read a book. It might be this. It might be my vagus nerve. It might be like, Think about just how clueless people are. But I was, cl- until we figured this out, I had no idea. And that's after spending 10 years on this. This confusion, again, just we were, it's not your fault. You're confused. These experts have confused us. If they had just been honest and said, we don't know what this is. Here's some Band-Aids. It's the best we can do. Okay, well, at least then you're not claiming to know. But when I tell you what it is, it's so simple. The only reason we discovered it is because we went looking to solve it versus manage it. So you yeah. said, where's, what was your question? Like, where is it coming from? Like now we know that it's in the body where, how do we start to, to fix it? Because I know again, an, a different set of experts would start to say, well, you need to calm yourself down. So you need to start working on your breathing and you need to meditate and so on. And I was like, for me personally, I look at people that say things like that. You need to do yoga. You need to concentrate on your breathing. You need to meditate. I can't do those things because I have attention deficit stuff going on and I can't sit still for two or three seconds, let alone, you know, do what you're telling me to do, which is breathing exercises and sit there for freaking 10 minutes every single day. Um, So, Uh, yes, but there's another reason it's not helpful. Like one thing is, yes, one thing, our one reason our program is so is so effective we tested it and tested it and retested it with people to make sure it was simple and doable. We don't get a, you don't get a 90% success rate and back up your results. Mm. If it's complicated and you can't do it. Ours is dead yeah. simple. If it's like, it's built like a gym. If you just work the steps, you get the results. But here's the other thing. Even if you could meditate, even if you could do your mindfulness, even if you could do breathing exercises, which are in the body, does the anxiety go away permanently or does it come back? Um, it, well, it, to be honest, for me, it winds me up even more. So I get even more anxious because then what happens is I'm actually sat there alone with all of these feelings that are going on and nothing's helping it go away because, as we've now established, it's all physical. And yes. and all of those techniques, even though they're quote-unquote physical techniques, they're actually designed because, again, when people when people say to you, you know, you need to do deep breathing exercises to calm the mind. They're always going back to the wrong location again. Well, yes, it's true. Some people will tell you that you can calm the mind with the body, which is partly true because the mind follows the body. The mind is a symptom of the body. We're wired where you feel it in your body and your mind is a tool to get the body what it needs. You feel hunger first, then your mind senses the hunger and says, where do we go for takeout? It's a tool to, okay. So if you feel fear, do you like my incredibly sophisticated examples? Um, Yes, no, I love it because that's pretty much the signal that mind sends and it is in the literal visual form of the golden arches, um, which, yeah. You know, I'm not allowed to eat in. And if my wife listens to this episode, she's about 100 episodes behind. I never, ever go for a cheeky Big Mac when I go to Brent Cross. Not at all. And those no. McDonald's French fries are not God's candy. They're so good. Every time I eat them, I'm like, I don't want to know what's in here, but these are so good. Anyway, the point <laughs> is, your audience knows When you feel calmer, have you ever noticed your mind tends to focus on more good things? And then when you feel more anxious, your mind goes, right. So again, more evidence. The mind is not the cause. The mind is the symptom, which is another reason these mental health experts didn't wake up. It's a symptom. So even if you do a body calming technique, which breathing exercises are, it can calm the mind because it's calming the body and the mind follows. But it's temporary, even yeah. at best. There's something called the emotional freedom technique where you tap. It's called tapping. Yeah. And what annoys me, yeah, it's tapping in these, right. Now, it quote unquote works and that it can temporarily calm you down. It's primarily on the body. What annoys me 
is the lack of humility. It's called the emotional freedom technique. Yet, you have to keep doing it because you do it, it calm down, and it comes back. So if you have to keep using it, Ribeiro, are you free? Well, no, because it... Funny enough, actually, a recent guest of mine, and we have to record again, which is going to be interesting now that I've actually spoken to you. But we, I did the classic mistake. There's a first time for everything where we had a great conversation. I was taught the tapping technique, um, which did help, but temporarily. Um, so I have to keep doing it. Um, and then got to the end of the conversation, said goodbye. And afterwards, I realized that I didn't hit the record button. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really it's, it's it's funny how things work, right? Because she and I are having to get back together to re-record. It will be a different conversation because obviously I'm armed with knowledge from what I learned from her. But now I've been in front of you, so it's yeah. going to be really interesting. Well, good because one but, of the things I'm right, trying to I, 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 I didn't. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I just wanted to say that you're absolutely right in the you kind of almost feel chained in a way because whilst those types of techniques do immensely help in the moment that's the thing it is in the moment and you know what am I going to do am I going to go start tapping my chest or you know doing whatever else like 20 times a day Exactly. And again, if, you know, there's value in all these techniques, they learn some things mm. that are helpful and they want to pass Absolutely. them on. I don't disparage people. Look, until we figured this out, we I didn't know it. So people are doing the best they can. That's not the issue. It's just you're confusing people by taking something where you're not free and calling it a freedom technique. That's a, you're kind of overplaying your hand. If your boat, if you're in a boat and there's a hole in the boat and water is coming in and, and someone said, here's a bucket. Now, it's not a permanent solution, but you if you keep bailing the bucket, you won't sink. And, the, and, and you say, what do you call the bucket? The sinking freedom technique. No, it's not a freedom technique because you have to keep bailing. You know what a sinking freedom technique is? You plug the effing hole. <laughs> then, okay? So don't call it emotional freedom technique. Call it temporary pain lowering band-aid technique fine it's not as cool as sounding probably won't sell as well but if you tell people it's a freedom technique then they start to think well this is as much freedom as i can expect when we tell people we solve it they're like can you is that even an option i'm like well not until now because people have been conditioned like an abusive relationship to just tolerate this stuff mm -hmm. here's another one this one again we've been tricked and almost gaslit into tolerating stuff and not having a problem. Again, my problem isn't what's out there. My problem is that we didn't see it as a problem. I spent 10 years. I spent so much money. I would go to these retreats, spend a lot of money, feel a little bit better, calm back, come home. It would all come back. And not once did I go, oh, that's not a good use of money. If I took my car to a mechanic and he fixed it and it only ran well for two days, I'd be like, that's a crappy mechanic. But I never said that's a crappy spiritual teacher. So I'm trying to wake people up. Here's one. Here's another one that tricks you into things. The website, which is very popular right now, is betterhelp.com. Yes. Okay. It's, it's got the word better everywhere. and it's got the word help. Yeah. Okay. So. What is it? Well, it's a website that gives uses the power of the internet to link people up with therapists. Okay, but they're calling their website not just help, but better help. It's got the word help. They're calling it help. Now, of course, they're calling it help because on some level it is helpful. But how helpful is it? We know that most likely those therapists are handing out tips and tools to manage. Fine, that's all you can do, but it's training people that this is the best help that you can expect. We're calling this help. So they don't just call it help, they call it better help. So they have a website, which is just a lot of well-intentioned Band-Aid hander outers, and they're calling it help, better help. It should just be more honest. Better than nothing help.com would be a more accurate description. Also, one of the features that they talk about is that you can easily change your therapist. 
which kind of sounds good. Okay. But within that is you may find someone that can't help you. And this is like a feature that this probably won't work that well. You could easily, it's like, that's not a feature. That's a liability. Okay. <laughs> the fact that you can, someone may not, anyway, it's not that that website isn't valuable. It's that they're training people. This is better help. No, well, I mean, it's internet it is- based band-aids dispersal. It is valuable because BetterHelp themselves are making, you know, anywhere from 60 to 100 bucks a week from over 4.4 million subscribers. No, you're absolutely right. I, I don't, I believe therapists really do have their hearts in the right place, but they are incentivized to not solve it. It's a phenomenal business model. Our program is six weeks, you're in, you're out. If we can't help you, you don't pay. And we don't charge that much because it's an online program. You don't have to work with a person one-on-one. We don't make a lot of money. We don't want it. We mm-hmm. want to make this scalable. So the money is in the management, but the satisfaction is in the solution. So emotional freedom technique, you are not free. Better help is better than nothing help. We are very confident. Our program, we call it the world's only no change, no charge, permanent anxiety solution. And we back that up because if it's not solved, you don't pay a penny. Yeah. Awesome. And it's the website people need to go to, which is danielpackard.com. Um, and that's where you get the free 45 minute training um and that gives you daniel's innovative technique that number one lowers your anxiety quickly and b gives you proof that your anxiety can be solved and then i guess from there people can then sign up to take the course if they want we just we we want to give people we we are so aware of how skeptical and burned people have been. So I tell people that we have a solution so they know it's possible and that's our mission. But like, I don't really sell the program. I'm passionate about it, but I'm like, don't worry about the program. You're too skeptical to even think it'll work, which is so sad that it's like a codependent person who's been in abuse for so long that when you have something good, people can't. So, So just, I like to keep things simple go to the next step, but let me explain to you partly what you're going to get in the free training and why Mm -hmm. it's valuable. First of all, what I've learned from sharing this with people is I can talk metaphors. I can talk about locations, but there's so many people out there that talk about anxiety and theories and this. And yeah, I believe what I'm saying is more accurate because we can back up our results, but your audience doesn't know that. I sound like just another person talking about anxiety. Yes, I'm ridiculously charming. Yes, my almost animal-like magnetism can almost impregnate people through a Zoom. But you know, they can't fully trust what I'm saying. So what do people trust? People trust an experience, feeling. So let me explain to you how we solved anxiety, the theory, and then we'll do a little role play, not sexual, experiential, so that you can feel what I'm talking about. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. So yes, it's coming from the body, but like where in the body? And you can't just say have the right location. You have to understand it in a way that makes it solvable. Because even if you said, okay, your problem with your car is in the engine, it's not a solution. Yeah, you got the right location, but like what now? So we realized that It's not just the body. We have to understand why it's coming from the body in a way that makes it solvable. But the beauty of the body is it's the opposite of the mind. As you said, the mind mind is vast. They don't understand the the mind. And when you try to understand the mind, the approach is psychological or spiritual, which are theories. They're like theories on what's going on. It's the ego. It's the scarcity mindset. It's, It's theories. Theories are a starting point, but you can't solve anything with a theory. But you go to the body, the body isn't the body isn't complicated. The body is simple. The body is comprised of systems. You got the adrenal system, the capillary system, the heart system. That it's all systems, and all of these systems have mechanics and engineering. Okay, when you're if you're choking, all of a sudden, no one says, "Hmm, is this your childhood?" No, you have an airway. It needs air getting through. You got something blocking the airway. That's mechanical. How do you unblock it? You put some pressure on your abdomen. Somebody does. It puts air behind the thing and it pops it out. That's a mechanical understanding. When I was younger, I was trying to impress a girl with some dance moves. I I landed wrong and I blew out my knee. So my knee hurts. I go to a knee expert. 
he took an MRI. He's like, look right there. Your ACL is blown out. That's what hurts. I went, sounds good. He then repaired the ACL and I've had no knee pain for 30 years. So why? Because it's a system, it's mechanics. So we just said, what system is making everybody feel this way? If we can figure out the system, we can figure out the mechanics that's making it malfunction and how to repair it. Make sense? Yeah. Now, once you start asking these questions, the answer reveals itself. It's really simple. So take out words like insecure, doubt, anxiety, panic. Take out those words, we're just with your labels on an experience. And let's just use the word nervous. Let's just say everyone's feeling different versions of nervous. Panic attack is super duper nervous. Overwhelm is a bit of nervous. It's just call it nervous. Okay. To you, Ribeiro, and your audience. What system in the body is most likely to, to be making everybody extra nervous? The adrenal system, the capillary system, or the nervous system? The nervous system makes the most sense since we're talking about nervousness. Yeah. Now, was that a complicated answer? No, sir. Kind of simple? Yeah, very. Yeah. People are feeling extra. <laughs> what gets me is, okay, so first of all, this is true. We figured out that the nervous system has basically crashed and malfunctioning and making everybody extra nervous. And then we figured out how to repair a nervous system. So yes, that's the information. But going back to the experts, okay? You got millions of people feeling different versions of extra nervous. There's a system in the body literally called the nervous system. We know systems in the body can malfunction. And the experts went, oh, yeah, brain disorder. What? Are you, are you kidding? If you, okay, if you figured it out, fine. If you had 100 years, anxiety is on the rise, suicide's on the rise, depression's on the rise, opioid, death, all this stuff's getting worse, and they're still like mental health. No. I'm sorry. You guys are fired. You are not paying attention. So to your listeners, you are feeling different versions of extra nervous. You can call it anxiety, insecurity, fear of rejection, fear of failure, but basically extra nervous, surprise, surprise, your nervous system has gone into a state of failure and it's malfunctioning. Now, this is very important that you understand the failure, because systems in the body have different degrees of unhealth. Take your teeth, okay? If you don't brush and floss a little while, you get a very surface level malfunction. You get some puffy gums, maybe a little bit of blood in the gums, okay? No big deal. If that's all it is, brush and floss, it goes away. But if, the, if you don't take care of your teeth long enough, it'll go to cavities. And if you keep not taking care of the teeth, then you have an infection in your root and you need a root canal. The lack of health has gone too far. The system is in a state of failure. Once the system is in a state of failure, surface level strategies won't work. Once you need a root canal, brushing and a flossing won't get the job done. It's gone too far. So can you understand that if your nervous system has gone into a real state of failure, it's crashed, can you see why just breathing exercises while in the right location won't get the job done? Yeah, no, totally. But does that also explain why people who come from a place of severe trauma in their lives, um, you know, go to end up, you know, years and years later, you hear a lot of those people say that they have been through multiple therapists, multiple types of therapy, they've tried just about everything, and still not been able to overcome, you know, the what they've been through um because they've been in such a you know what what they've been through has caused such a catastrophic failure of the nervous system that then itself hasn't actually been dealt with did what's I the question ask, did i uh, yeah i know i was i was literally just wondering that what was the question well no, just I think, in the I was, sake I think of trying just, to keep I things simple just, I think you just triggered my thinking about that. Just thinking, you know, again, using myself own traumatic background as an example. Yeah. Well, here's what I'll say, a... even though it's not fully clear people, when I bring this stuff up, they're like, well, what about trauma? And, and, and it's a good question. If, if you, if your nervous system is, you know, not functioning correctly and you've gone through trauma, you think, Oh, like it sort of starts to make sense. Mm. But 
I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but here's what I'm going to say. When I had my symptoms, it was anxiety and PTSD. Hmm. And some of that PTSD was dormant from childhood. It just came up. The point is trauma and anxiety, people already kind of know they're related. If you feel traumatized, you feel fear, nervous. Now, maybe you call that anxiety, but they're linked. However, people that when we use the same set of tools, not only did my anxiety go away, the trauma went away. Yeah. Why? Because yes, things happen during our childhood that can kind of mess up our nervous system. But we saw that's not the root cause because there's still how are you treating yourself? So, so I don't want to get too much into it. What I can tell you is my anxiety went away went from the same program. Because if your nervous system is healthy, no matter how you get it, can you see that not only anxiety would go away, but your trauma would go down? Yeah. Also, we don't guarantee it in the program, but on a regular basis, people's trauma significantly goes down or completely goes away. Yeah. But people also say, will your program work if I have trauma? And it's a good question, but what they don't realize is the trauma and your anxiety actually has one root cause. We're told that we have multiple issues, OCD, ADHD, trauma, anxiety, overwhelm. You make a lot more money when you convince people you have a lot more problems. We realize that a lot of these things are just one core thing. And I'll explain to you why. So first of all, by the way, this is a good conversation. You're asking great questions, Roberto. So if you have a malfunctioning nervous system, your audience is like thinking, okay, well, I guess that makes sense. I'm extra nervous, nervous system. But like, what does that really mean? Well, here's what it means. The way you experience a malfunctioning nervous system, a crashed nervous system. You feel something. It's not a word that you use very often, but it's a word you can completely say, yes, I feel that. If you have a crashed nervous system, what you feel is unsafe. Yeah. Can you see that you may call it, I have anxiety, I have this, I have fear of this. I've, but if you take away those labels and I said to you, Ribeiro, and to your audience, what if like just in your own body, you just do not feel fully safe? Does that resonate with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't feel safe, you will then feel a feeling called fear. And then you will label that fear, anxiety, panic attack, overwhelm, fear of rejection. You'll call it different names. But what if those are all just symptoms of feeling unsafe? And what we saw was that basically when a nervous system crashes, you feel unsafe. So the beauty of this program, it's not an anxiety program. When we figured out how to repair the nervous system from failure to health, I and our clients, you just feel safe from the inside out. I still have challenges. Things still happen. But can you see, to you, Ribeiro, and to your audience, can you see that if I could just magically, right now, from the inside out, you felt safe, how do you think your life would be better? I think I'd immeasurably kind of almost would feel like a superpower because the thing you know when you when you come from an internal place of feeling safe it's almost like you have an invisible shield around you because so much of um anxiety or you know what we think is anxiety that we feel is actually stuff it, it comes at us it seems to come at us externally from all directions so you you use the example when we first got on the call of of being in a hurricane or a tornado and i've been using that example so much like my listeners will be rolling their eyes right now because it's like oh my god he's going to do it again um but you know i've been describing my feelings to to other guests and to friends and family and so on that i feel like i'm i'm stuck in the eye of a storm and everything is swirling and happening around me and i can't quite sort of pull everything down um where and and so what i'm doing is i'm describing things that are happening all around me whereas if i felt centered if i felt safe inside 
the other stuff going on around outside wouldn't matter so much or it obviously things do happen that do matter i'd be a lot calmer in how i dealt with them yeah that's what exactly it doesn't take an engineer to, with eight years of experience in this to get people to go oh my god that would change everything and it i uh, I was working with a gentleman. He he did sales. His name was John um, from California. And he said, how are you going to get rid of my anxiety? I've had this my whole life. And I, he said, the only reason I'm reaching out to you is I met somebody at a party who said they tried things for years and nothing works. And this is what actually got them results. And then he mentioned that you only pay for results. And I went, who the hell can back up their results like that? So he said, so I'm here. I'm skeptical, but I'm intrigued. And I said, what if, is it fair to say that deep down you just don't feel safe? He's like, oh yeah. I, I, he said, I haven't felt safe since I was a kid. I was like, yeah, welcome to the club. I said, so we're not going to, what if I told you we're not going to get rid of your anxiety? You're going to feel safe. And then your anxiety, which is a symptom, goes away. He said, oh, that's even better. And I said, how would life be if you felt safe? He said, oh my God. I mean, it's like, it, you, everybody can feel it. You're more confident. You're more authentic. You're more grounded. You're more solid. Mm -hmm. And as you said, life can still come at you. You know, in Florida, they build these houses where hurricanes are. And some of the houses are built to be hurricane proof, not because there's magical fairy dust. They build a more solid foundation. It's anchored. It's solid. Yeah. So when yeah. the hurricane comes, the other houses get knocked out and the houses that have a solid foundation are fine. So yeah. is it the hurricane that knocks houses down or is it the lack of a solid foundation? Yeah. It's you know nervous system failure um, is is a big one with salespeople. You know they get that all the time, and they, you know that's called that can be called call reluctance. It can just be straight out fear. But nervous system failure is a big one with salespeople. You said that guy was a salesperson. Yeah, and because he had nervous system, the, the key about failure. And do you I notice what I'm calling? Why... Do you notice what I'm calling it now? Good, you are a quick study. Very good. And you don't even have anxiety. Here, repeat after me, you, Ribeiro, to your audience. Repeat after me. You say, there is nothing wrong with me. There is nothing wrong with me. I am not broken. I'm not broken. I do not have anxiety. I do not have anxiety. This is not a disorder. This is not a disorder. I have a system in my body called the nervous system. I have a system in my body called the nervous system. And like some systems in the body, it's crashed. And, that, and like some systems in the body, it has crashed. And it's making me extra nervous. And it's making me extra nervous. This is just a me mechanical issue. It's just a mechanical issue. That can be repaired. That can be repaired. Through healing. Through healing. I am not broken. I'm not broken. I just have to heal my nervous system back to health. Just need to heal my nervous system back to health. And I am so fortunate. And I'm so fortunate. Because Daniel and his company already figured out how to do it. Because Daniel and his company already figured out how to do it. I bring that up because when we were going through it, we didn't know if it was work. And I was one of the early test cases. It was work it was scary we didn't know what would work if it would work and now it's just like streamlined automated programs so i'm a little bit jealous that people have it down to six weeks um so the point is your nervous system is crashed once it's crashed surface level things aren't going to solve it breathing exercises meditation it's gone too deep you need a full repair our program goes deep to the and repairs it and a repair is very different than a band-aid this is a repair yeah. reset system in three phases first you learn in the in the six weeks first you repair the nervous system which is kind of like going to the doctor and they are going to the dentist and they clean out the infection and they pack it full of you know so you repair it you stabilize it phase two is you retrain your nervous system you kind of bring it back to calibration and balance that's phase two and phase three is to maintain, meaning just keep it healthy moving forward. So we go to the root cause with these tools you do. You repair your nervous system, you retrain your nervous system, and then you learn how to maintain your nervous system. Those are the three phases. And the benefit is at the end is you get to feel safe. 
the client that reached out to me, the one that just says, I have not felt safe since I was a kid, you know, we're tracking the data and in his notes, not only were his anxiety levels dropping, but he said, this morning I woke up and for the first time since I was a kid, I felt safe in my body. Yeah. And that's not temporary. That is permanent. But I want your audience to feel what this means so they can understand it. What I'm saying is this whole big complicated problem is simple and mechanical. I'm saying it's coming from your nervous system. And that's good news because systems are simple. They have mechanics and engineering. If you push on this, this moves here. You know, every that's what they do when they test your funny bone. They tap a little thing and it, it's a reflex. It's mechanics every mm -hmm. single time. So um, we're going to do a little role play where I'm going to you're we're going to do something and you're going to feel your nervous system and I'm going to do what your nervous system doesn't like and you're going to feel unsafe and anxious. Then I'm going to show you what your nervous system needs and you'll feel calmer and less anxious. And this is just to show you that there's very simple engineering inside you. OK. So I'm going to be talking to you, Ribeiro, but when I say the word you, I'm also talking to your audience. So if I say, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, Ribeiro, and you, audience member, okay? Yep. But because this is a very super high-end role play, let's practice. Okay, so let me ask you, wink, wink, Ribeiro, an audience member, hello. Let me ask you, pop quiz, what is the root cause of anxiety? Is it the A- your in-laws, B, the justice system, or C, the nervous system? The nervous system. Gold stars to you, which means Ribeiro and you. Okay, so anytime I say the word you, okay. So here we go. Here's a little role play. Let's say we're friends, which I feel like we've become in the last yeah, little while. We are. Okay, and... I'm going to treat you a certain way. Now, imagine I've been a good friend for a while, but then for some reason, which you're not clear on, all of a sudden, I'm not a very good friend to you anymore. I'm mean to you. I'm critical of you. You tell me you need help, and I leave you on your own. You tell me you don't want to do something. I tell you you don't care. You tell me I've hurt you, and I don't care. When you need me, I walk away and leave you alone. And I don't just do this for a day. I do this for... 10 years. If I treat you that way, will you feel safe and calm or unsafe and anxious? No, unsafe and anxious. And actually, to a slightly smaller degree, I've just been going through that with someone recently. Yeah. Yeah. So if we do certain things to people in their nervous system, all of a sudden, unsafe anxious. Okay. So now let's say you're feeling unsafe and anxious. And then you tell me. So on the count of three to you, that means you listener, I want you to say the way you're treating me makes me feel unsafe. On the count of three, say the way you're treating me makes me feel unsafe. One, two, three. Daniel, the way that you've been treating me, it makes me feel unsafe. Why do you feel like this? You shouldn't feel like this. Your life is fine. There's, it's no big deal. And I didn't do this. This is your fault. And also, these feelings, they're, they're bothering me. Okay, I have a life I want to leave, and you're showing up here all scaredy pants and putting your stuff on me. So do not, like, deal with it on your own. You're broken. It's not my fault. Does that make you feel calm? And safe or uncalm and anxious? Uh, uncalm and anxious. Yeah. And also, what the, you know, <laughs> WTF. Yeah. yeah, of course. But the point is, when I treat you this way, you will mechanically feel unsafe and anxious mm -hmm. and then more unsafe and anxious. Okay. So that's what the nervous system does not like. If you get any version of that, you will feel unsafe and anxious. Okay, so now we'll do one. Uh, we'll do it again. This is what you do if you want the nervous system healthy. On the count of three, you, on the count of three, say the way you're treating me has me feeling unsafe. One, two, three. Daniel, the way you're treating me has me feeling unsafe. Oh my God, I am so sorry. Thank you for telling me. 
you're right. I mean, first of all, I'm sorry you feel this way. Second of all, I'm sorry I even put you in this position. I've been treating you like crap and I'm, I feel bad and I'm glad you told me. And this is telling me I need to treat you better. So thank you for telling me how you feel is totally valid. And I'm sorry I was selfish and now we're going to work together as a team and I'm going to do whatever it takes to treat you better. So you trust me and you get what you need. Do you feel less safe and more anxious or more safe and calm? Uh, more safe and calm. Yeah. So what I've showed you through this dramatized role play is if you know what's going on in the nervous system, you know how to make the unsafety and anxiety worse, but you also know how to make it better. There's very simple engineering inside. It's not spiritual, psychological, it's mechanical. And we figured this out. Now in this role play, it was sort of, we were in a friend relationship. But as you can imagine, you're in a relationship with yourself, but the same mechanics still apply in the same way that I can make another person feel calm or anxious. You, if you know what the nervous system needs, you can go from anxious to calm. Now, why in this role play in one version, you felt one way and then in the other, you started to feel better. The actual why that gets explained in the training. If you're like, well, yeah, yeah, but why, why? That's what gets explained in the training is why, but then also how to take that knowledge and apply it to a technique to yourself such that your nervous system gets what it needs and starts to strengthen. And when it starts to strengthen, you feel safer. When you feel safer, you feel less anxious. What yeah. do you think about what we what you just experienced? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. The one thing only that kind of confuses me slightly is that, you know, you, my friend's response, I don't have any control over that. Does that make sense? Well, it does make sense. It was sort of a metaphorical role play. I know, to just I know. Sort of experience that there are things that we can do to people that will make the nervous system unhealthy or I healthy and we can trigger unsafety yes. and safety just to show like i get it yeah. yeah i get it i get it i get it i think too much that's the other problem is you get to know me daniel um well i think it was a no, valid totally question it. but it was yeah, metaphorical you were, basically you were forcing my n nervous system right yeah yeah okay no I just totally to get show it. It's mechanical. Like, I didn't have to wonder what, I mean, I said rhetorically, do you feel calm? Of course, I know you felt uncalm because that's the mechanics that'll happen to any single person. You can't, I've never done this exercise where I treat someone like crap and they're like, wow, I feel fantastic. Like, never. Why? Because the mechanics are same in everybody. That's the beauty of the body. If you take a thousand people and they don't drink enough water, all of them will have problems. It's yeah, not yeah. theoretical or spiritual or one person says, I have a positive mindset. No, if you don't give the body what it needs, mechanically, you're going to have adrenal failure and you're going to have problems. Uh -oh. But the cool thing is if you take a thousand people that don't have enough water and then you give them enough water, those symptoms go away. People say, Daniel, how can you have one program that like works for pretty much everybody? Isn't everybody different? Psychologically, maybe, but mechanically, no. You get a thousand people with a broken bone and you put a thousand casts on a thousand bones, you're going to have a very high success rate. Not because I'm Jesus, because it's a mechanical issue and we know how to fix mechanical issues. Yeah, and I wanted yeah. to clarify because I know your audience was thinking, is he Jesus? I want to be no. I am Jewish, but no, not <laughs> Jesus. I not think yet. actually what, what most of my audience are probably thinking is, Roberto, you stupid idiot. You know, that's what he was actually trying to show us and demonstrate, you dick. Um, so, yeah, sorry, everybody. I just wasted like two minutes of your time. But anyhow. Well, let me interrupt. Uh First of all, I want to defend you. I think it was a valid question and you're curious. Second of all, I know that you're British and I've been living in England and you guys are professional level, beat the shit out of your selvers. Um, I've noticed how it's really, I mean, everybody beats themselves up, but you guys are Olympic 
level. You cannot appreciate. You could walk up to a British person and say, oh, my God, you were the first person on the moon. They would say, well, the rocket was going there anyway. Like you guys (laughs) just can't be nice to yourself. And the smallest thing, you won't just be critical. You'll be like violent. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, we are so (laughs) self-deprecating. There is some dark energy in this place. One of the most common phrases in this country which just gets said every day, nonchalantly, is bloody hell. Okay, now, think about that. You want to come up with a word to express something as extreme. Okay, so the word hell, that would have been bad enough. Like, that's (laughs) like the worst word ever. And the British people were like, no, that's not bad enough. How about bloody hell? It's like, all right. Well, that is so dark. And they'll say bloody hell when there's like a queue at the post office. Mm -hmm. No, bloody hell. Too much. Too much. And just just as much will say effing hell. Now, if you think about the literal act of doing that, I mean, you know, fire brimstone and putting your bits in it. Yeah. So anyway. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I... One of the benefits of this program is I'm emotionally free. I'm also logistically free. Everything I own fits in two bags and I live in a new country every year. And I've been traveling to all these beautiful places, but I thought, you know, I'm going to give English England a try. And I say give it a try because when I was younger and I was a comedian, I used to tour comedy clubs in England and I individual British people are wonderful, but the culture has a darkness that is, is, the one time in my life where I was actually afraid to die was not in South Africa, in poor areas where there probably is violence. It was being stuck on a tube after a football match with those drunk people. I was like, I am getting the F out of here. There is a darkness in this country that is like, so anyway, but people have told me, oh, it's getting better and it's healthier. And so I asked, I, I asked a person, hey, like, is there a pretty place that I can go and like, you know, experience England again? Give it a second chance. So I came to this little tiny town on the southern tip of England called Newquay. It's in Cornwall. Yep. yep. It's very pretty, beautiful. But man, that like British darkness and heaviness. No judgment, but I'm a higher vibration. Like it's kind of like now I eat healthy food and so I don't want to be around unhealthy food. So of course I come from the US. I'm not sitting here saying that we're a healthier, but there's a type of unhealth in this country where unfortunately I'm leaving in two weeks to go back to Mexico. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. England. I gave you a second yeah, chance. So, so normally I ask people at the beginning of the conversation, where are you calling in from? Are you in are you in my time zone right now? I wanted to be in rapport. Oh, wait a minute. I've been calling you Roberto right now, and I realize it's Roberto. Yeah. I am so sorry. No, that's okay. I'm I'm British through and through. I was born in London, so I would never correct you. Right. But Again, afterwards, it's I'll not say, okay. bloody hell, that bloody Daniel Packard flipping calling me the wrong thing the whole conversation. Well, I'll just say I like to get people's names right. I'm human, so it doesn't always <laughs> happen. So I want to at least acknowledge it and say, I'm sorry. Uh, you don't need From to this apologize. point forward, you will forever be Roberto. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, where are you right now? Well, for another three weeks, I'm in New Key. N E W. So you are in New Key at the moment. Yeah. Oh my God. Poor you. Um, so yeah, but that's the other reason. Like the other thing is that we talk about the weather all the time, especially when it's crap, right? We just like to focus yeah. on. And I got it. I, I, I have enjoyed the weather. People said, why are you going to England in the winter? And I said, well, for me, it's like, it's experiential tourism. It's like, I, I've lived in Brazil in the summer and I've, li- I've lived in these beautiful places. I went and uh, just to experience, I'm a California boy from the Bay Area. Like, I want to do something I'm not used to. So I spent a winter in Estonia just to kind of see what it was like. I kind of dug it. I got to wear boots and stomp around in the snow and it made that crunchy sound. So then I was like, oh, I'll go to England for the winter, get my England on. And it's all dreary and like eat fish and chips. So I go, there's a cafe, the waves are crashing and it's like very like, picturesque and there's cliffs and you're like oh you know so i i i got an experience of england but i'm done and i'm going back to the sun of mexico like I'm, enough of that did, did you visit i don't know if you ever saw the the witches the movie i think it was the 90s version of that roald dahl book um but i think it's new key where the famous hotel is where all the witches kind of gather 
I don't know if you, it was Angelica Houston, I think, was the, was. Witches of Eastwick, maybe, is that it? Who knows? No, it was The Witches, the Roald Dahl um, book. Um, Mm. But anyway, Um, Daniel, thank you so, so much. Like, you've been freaking awesome. Um, And if everybody totally missed it, danielpackard.com is where you need to go for the free 45-minute training. Um, And then you can progress from there um have you had fun today yeah i mean (laughs) yeah because i'm in my purpose which again is another benefit of having a strong nervous system is i don't have fear and anxiety so then you naturally follow your purpose because there's not something slowing you down and and, you know some people again i know we talked a lot about anxiety but again this program Some people take it for anxiety, like it's just painful anxiety and panic attacks and they want that. Other people come because maybe it's not, you don't call it anxiety, but fear of rejection, fear of failure, self-doubt, insecurity, anything where fear is slowing you down and you want it not managed but gone so that you can be a more confident, authentic, happier, more successful person. We're not in, we're not it opens you up to your full potential. We are not in this training is not about anxiety. It's about helping people feel permanently safe to unlock their permanent potential. And so let me explain to you because your audience is busy and I want to explain to you why they would even download the free training because it's still 45 minutes. And these days that's a lot of time. So first of all, I just want to be clear. Um, I don't expect any of your audience to believe what I've said. I expect them to go, this guy seems to be making sense. Like, you're right. It's not in the mind, it's in the body. I am feeling extra nervous. Seems to make sense. It's not a mystery. It's coming from the nervous system. Systems fail. And we know that systems can be repaired. If you need a root canal, you go to the dentist, they repair it. If you're having a heart attack, they clean up your heart and then they put you on salads. We know if you've ever hurt your knee, they repair it. We know systems can fail and you can repair systems. It's just, we never thought to apply that to how we feel. But when you realize the nervous system can control how we feel, it actually makes it possible. But still, you won't fully believe me. So that, and when we tell people we have a simple solution for anxiety, they do not believe me. And I get that. So uh, the problem is if people are too skeptical, we can't help them. So I asked my team, I was like, how do we make people not be skeptical? We can't. Because your experience tells you to be skeptical of this. So we realized, well, we have to give you an experience to give you a good experience. But then I, we said, well, our, our program, you know, it takes a while to kick in and people, you know, they, it's like two, they have two minutes these days. So what we did was we, we had a one week retreat, sorry, a two day retreat, like a mini training that we used to run. And we basically condensed that entire experience into 45 minutes. That's what you're going to experience. And what you're going to do in this free training is your first, you're going to understand more deeply why earlier your nervous system felt unsafe and anxious and why it felt safer and less anxious. Like why? And then specifically, you'll see what you're doing to your nervous system that's creating this. Then we'll explain the theory of how you repair a nervous system. And then more importantly, you'll then apply a technique, an actual technique from our system. You will apply it to yourself and you will measurably, because you're going to measure this, you will feel measurably calmer and you will feel your fear and anxiety getting better. You can either just use it as a technique to manage your anxiety I don't recommend it because you already have management techniques, but you could just use it for, but you could also do it to learn about yourself and also see that maybe this could be simple and maybe you don't have to live with fear and anxiety if you don't want to. And maybe it could give you hope and possibility that you could live a much fuller, more fulfilled, present, successful life. So I wish it was two minutes and it would go on TikTok. It's 45 minutes, which I know is infinity in the internet, but I think it's a good value proposition. If you think 45 minutes for completely free is a good use of time to learn a technique that can make you calmer by up to 85%, understand truly why you feel unsafe and how to feel safe, and then more importantly, apply a technique that will show you that you can live without fear and anxiety and that it's simple which will give you hope that you can live a better life. If that sounds like a good use of your time, come to my website, danielpacker.com. 
I've made things simple. The program is totally free, the training, and just see what's possible for you. So do not take my word for it. Just be curious and just do the next step, which is to download the free training, try it for yourself, and then see what you want to do from there. Perfect. And I'll make sure that I've got those links in the show notes for those of you that haven't been making notes. Um, Daniel, thank you so, so much once again. Thank you all so much for joining Daniel and I. Don't forget, we are on Instagram at Tailoring Talk Podcast. You know I love feedback, so email me at tailoringtalkpodcast at gmail.com. You can also connect with Daniel through his website. Again, it's danielpackard.com. I'll put his other links in the show notes too. Remember to subscribe, rate, and review, and this is really important. Also, click the share button in your player to send this episode on to anyone you know who might get some help or be inspired by what Daniel discussed today. And if you're enjoying Tailoring Talk and you want to support the show, you can do so at the link in the show notes. Have a great week. Be good to each other. Heal your nervous systems. And I'll see you on the next one.